Questions orales. Oral questions. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Prime Minister, it's not worth the cost. For example, a month ago, after a big photo op, he promised to bring down the cost of a Thanksgiving dinner. But we can see today nothing other than another photo op. But Canadians can't eat photo ops, Mr. Speaker. They need turkey. They need other food to eat. And what has gone up since this government took office by almost 70 percent, the cost of turkey. Will they reverse those increases before Thanksgiving? The Honourable Minister. I'd like to thank the Leader of the Opposition for his question. What Canadians know is not to take his advice on economics. The last piece of advice he has was to invest in crypto. And now he's suggesting to Canadians that they should buy turkey that costs $120. I think they can get it a lot cheaper than that, Mr. Speaker. If the Conservatives want to do something for Canadians, they should vote for C-56 and help Canadians now. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition, Mr. Speaker, what is clear is that this minister is the turkey in this joke. When you look at flyers, you can see in the last years of the Conservative uh, rule, Turkey was $1.49 a pound, and now it's two forty nine. It's a 67 percent increase after eight, eight years of this Prime Minister and his carbon taxes, which are causing costs to go up for farmers and for truckers and so on, and ultimately for consumers of groceries. Will the government reverse these exorbitant increases by Thanksgiving, yes or no, in four days? Before I turn it over to the minister to answer the question, I'd like to remind all members that it's important we shouldn't compare a member to uh, uh, to an animal, for example. The Honourable Minister, thank you for your intervention, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to commend you on your new role. This was my first chance to do so. This is no joke, Mr. Speaker. I hope Canadians watching today realize there's no joke here. We came up with a five-point plan. We called on the major grocery chains to do their fair share to help Canadians. Secondly, we created a specific office to help Canadians on issues of uh, shrinkflation. Third, we want a grocery code of conduct signed. Fourth, we want to help uh, equalize bargaining power and... Then I have chef to now, the Leader of the Opposition. Eight years, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost of food. For example, the price of turkey is up at Loblaws by 67 percent after eight years of this Prime Minister's carbon taxes. And all they offered since they promised to bring prices down by Thanksgiving is a code of conduct an office and a photo op. You can't eat any of those three things. They won't be on the Thanksgiving dinner table. So what will they do in the next four days to reverse the 67 percent increase in the cost of a turkey at Loblaws, just like they promised they would, Mr. Speaker? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we will take no lessons from this Conservative, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and now he's suggesting to Canadians to buy a turkey at $120. I found a butterball for him, Mr. Speaker, $30. And I
All right, we got the first scratch. <laughs> I'd like to remind members, uh, all members, please, that props are not acceptable uh, in the House of Commons. It's about the debate. The Honourable Minister. Uh, you know, shopping for the Leader of the Opposition to help him. But, Mr. Speaker, if they want to do something for Canadian, not just asking questions, but do something. Vote for feces, C-56, Mr. Speaker. It's going to help Canadians. It's going to stabilize prices in Canada. It's going to bring competition in this country. That's what we need. It's for them to act, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Fast. The Canadians didn't want champagne for uh, Thanksgiving. They just want some food. And I did a little bit of price shopping on that for him. In the last day of the last days of the Conservative government, the price for a pound of turkey was a buck forty-nine, and this, the flyers today show it's two dollars forty-nine, a, sev a seventy percent. Increase, And I might add that the picture of the turkey during the Conservative years was a big, plump, beautiful bird, whereas right now it's a skimpy, shrimpy little thing that looks like it's been taxed to death. Mr. Speaker, why won't they get off the back of the turkey so that we can have a nice dinner for Thanksgiving? Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition can have as much as he wants, but one thing I can tell you, Canadians have no fun these days, Mr. Speaker, because they know, because they know, because they know, Mr. Speaker. Settle down. The Honourable Minister, 23 seconds left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I hope that I have as much energy to support our bill, Mr. Speaker, to make a difference in the life of Canadians. Because, Mr. Speaker, this is not a joke, Mr. Speaker. Canadians expect action. That's what we've taken this morning with a five-item action plan to help stabilize price in Canada. And if the Conservatives want to keep laughing and make jokes, Mr. Speaker, tell that to Canadians, which expect them to approve Bill 66, reform competition, more lower prices in Canada, and make sure that Canadians can have what they deserve from the situation. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Minister accidentally told the truth there for a second. Yeah. He said Canadians aren't having any fun, and he's got that right, because after eight years, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. He says we should energetically support his bills. Well, he's been forcing, and his Prime Minister has been forcing Canadians to support Liberal bills for eight years, and the bill is way too high. Food prices are up more than 20 per cent in two years, the fastest increase in interest rates in monetary history. Why won't they stop sending Canadians the bill and let Canadians afford to eat, heat, and house themselves this Thanksgiving? Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the leader of their position. He's coming actually to some sense. He realized that the best way to help Canadians is to support the government, Mr. Speaker, because this is a time when all parliamentarians need to come together, Mr. Speaker. That's why we presented a plan that's going to help to stabilize prices in Canada, that's going to increase competition in this country, and it's going to take measures to help Canadians. Mr. Speaker, if he wants to give, give a gift to Canadians for Thanksgiving, why don't he support C-56 and show Canadians that he can do something for them? The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, it's funny. It's always complicated for Liberals to defend French in Quebec. Take, for example, the Minister of Immigration. Yesterday in committee, he simply couldn't acknowledge a basic fact that all the indicators point to French is in decline in Quebec. No way. It's like James Bond under torture, refusing to talk. Oddly enough, it reminds us of the debates over C-13, C the official languages reform. The minister was one of the West Island Liberals who fought against better protection for French. Is that a coincidence? No, the Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, we need to be careful 
with the statistics. More people than ever before are able to speak French. But if you're talking about the language used at home, when I was young, I spoke Spanish at home, but I'm a Francophone. I spoke Spanish at home, but at school, at hockey, at work, I always spoke French, Mr. Speaker. So Bill 101 is working in Quebec. That's what proves it. The bloc can cry, can cry foul, but the fact is that there are more French speakers than ever before, and this government will always endeavor to do more every day, and that there will be more Fran French speakers every day. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, we're talking about the Minister of Immigration here. The federal government increased the number of temporary immigrants to Quebec by 150,000 people this year. Quebec is worried about its settlement capacity, and the Quebec immigration minister discussed this with the federal minister, but said that the concept of settlement capacity was not part of his thinking. The same minister who has all the trouble in the world admitting French is threatened, he doesn't recognize that settlement capacity has to be part of his thinking on immigration. Do we really have to explain that to him? Don't I have the Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, the figure the member opposite is referring to is m mother tongue. That include, excludes me and a whole bunch of other ministers. I am a proud Quebecer, proud of being so, proud to say so, but the statistic he's referring to is mother tongue. But we should be proud of the high number of people who can speak French in Quebec. And the, the, the member should be ashamed of using statistics the way he is. I'm a proud Quebecer and a proud speaker of French. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Thank you. 21 months since food prices have outpaced general inflation. Almost, and the Prime Minister wasn't willing to do anything until he started falling behind in the polls. That's two years that Canadians have been struggling because this government's unwilling to take on the real problem, which is corporate greed. Now, will the cover government admit that their plan uh, to scramble and try to do something is to save themselves, not Canadians. Here, here. Actually, Mr. Speaker, I beg to differ. We actually have been putting in place programs to support Canadians, bill after bill, law after bi law. 11 million Canadians with the grocery rebate, Mr. Speaker. 4.2 million Canadians with the workers' benefit. 6 million Canadians in increasing old age security. Why, Mr. Speaker? Because our government believes in investing in Canadians time after time, and we will continue to do that to build a strong Canada. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Courage to take on corporate greed when it comes to the price of groceries, nor when it comes to the privatization of our healthcare system. Shoppers Drug Mart, owned by Galen Weston, is rapidly expanding an American style for profit healthcare delivery in our country. And the government's nowhere to be seen. Last election, the Prime Minister said he would defend public universal health care, and now he calls privatization innovation. So, what's the plan? Wait another two years and then ask Galen Weston nicely to stop? <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And together, we've made huge progress in reducing drug costs from Canadians by working together on bulk purchasing. $3.5 billion less is now spent by Canadians by reducing those costs. We need and must do much more. That's why we're continuing to work not only with the, uh, the party opposite, the New Democrats, but with all parties, with a strategy on rare, uh, rare diseases by introducing legislation on pharmacare to Together, we can make sure that Canadians aren't faced with the impossible choice of essentials or the medicine they need. After eight years of this NDP Liberal government, even Thanksgiving dinner has become unaffordable. Mm -hmm. Food banks across the country are overwhelmed. With Thanksgiving approaching, 
Some food banks have made the tough decision of cutting back on distributing food because they just don't have enough to go around. The Liberals' carbon taxes have driven up the cost of Thanksgiving staples like potatoes by 77%. Will this Prime Minister reverse the 77% hike on Thanksgiving food before Thanksgiving as he promised? Yes or no? L'honorable secrétaire parlementaire. Mr. Speaker, if the Conservative member wants to see grocery prices lowered, I hope that she asks her leader why it is that the Conservatives continue to delay the legislation that is before this House. In fact, just this morning, I was so pleased to see the member from Mission Misqui Fraser Canyon say that he supports Bill C-56. And I wonder if other Conservatives can convince their leader to support this bill, because Canadians are counting on all of us in this House to help stabilize grocery prices. Norfolk. Canadians are counting on immediate relief before Thanksgiving. People are rationing food across this country. According to Food Banks Canada, people are making impossible choices between paying their rent or putting food on the table for their families. This Liberal NDP government continues their inflationary spending, which has caused grocery prices to increase by 94%, as in the case with lettuce. Canadians are realizing that this Prime Minister just isn't worth the cost. That's right. Will this Prime Minister keep his promise and reverse his punishing... Mr. Speaker, there are important measures that can be immediately implemented in order to help Canadians. But the problem is what we hear from the Conservatives are very sincere concerns in question period. But then when it comes time to vote, Mr. Speaker, when it comes time to debate legislation, what we're seeing are procedural delay tactics and Conservatives voting against the interests of Canadians. Mr. Speaker, I would urge everybody in this House to act in order to support Canadians, stabilize prices and get more homes built in this country. This will not be a happy Thanksgiving for many Canadian families because food prices are absolutely out of control. And the NDP leader just said that food inflation has outpaced inflation over the last 20 months, which is coincidentally the length of the Liberal NDP coalition. What? What could be happening, Mr. Speaker? But the sad fact is this. Canadian families are going to have to make the hard choice. Feed their family or uh, pay their rent. Will the Prime Minister finally recognize the damage he's done to Canada, keep his promise so they have an affordable Thanksgiving dinner? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And as I said, we're taking concrete steps. They're on the table right here in the House. And I don't understand how the Conservatives can pretend to be sincere about their concern for Canadians, while at the same time, they're using procedural tactics to try to prevent us from helping Canadians. Mr. Speaker, it's beyond me. If the Conservatives want to be there for Canadians, well, they should pull up their socks and get down to work and help us help Canadians. Mr. Speaker, only a party whose leader said, I admire the basic dictatorship of China, would say legitimate debate about a government piece of legislation is so inconvenient and an obstruction. That is a disgraceful comment and an opinion. But it's not a surprise from these Liberals whose leader admires the basic dictatorship. Mr. Speaker, everything they've done has done nothing to improve food affordability. After eight long years of this Liberal government, Canadians can't pay for food. Will the Prime Minister keep his promise so Canadians can have an affordable Thanksgiving dinner? Yeah. 
l'honorable secrétaire parlementaire. Mr. Speaker, perhaps the Conservatives can then explain in debate what it is about cutting GST on the construction of new homes that they actually disagree with. What is it about strengthening competition laws to stabilize grocery pr uh, prices here in Canada that they disagree with? Because I haven't heard a single argument in debate that has convinced any Canadian in this country that we shouldn't proceed with those measures, Mr. Speaker. And if the Conservatives want to help Canadians, they should be sincere in their actions. They should vote in the interests of Canadians. The Honourable Member for Mégantic Lérable. Mr. Speaker, we would have voted f for scrapping the carbon tax, which would have immediately affected all Canadians' pocketbooks. But instead, the Prime Minister made a big media show of saying he had brought together the food giants so the Canadians could afford their Thanksgiving dinners. He made that promise to Canadian, but food prices have increased potatoes by 67 percent and so on. There's only four days left to bring prices down in time for Thanksgiving. After eight years of empty promises, will he or won't he keep his promise to make Thanksgiving dinner affordable? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives are very selective in choosing their facts. But one thing they never talk about is the fact that what is driving up food prices is also climate change, because this year we had the worst harvests in almost all of Quebec and Canada, in all the regions. And it's so important to put a price on pollution and to combat climate change. And if there's one group who knows that, it's farmers. So we want to help farmers and Canadians. And if they do, they should be supporting our efforts to fight climate change. The Honourable Member for Megan Ticlérable. Mr. Speaker, Speaker, people in Chambly don't know how they're going to pay for their Thanksgiving turkey. Meanwhile, the leader of the Bloc Liberal Coalition thinks he's the head of Quebec diplomacy, spending thousands of dollars on travel and greenhouse gas emissions to attend fancy cocktail parties to talk about what? The cost of living, rising rents, violence in Montreal, carbon tax hikes? No, he went to talk about independence. If you vote for the Bloc, you'll pay for it. Will the Prime Minister call his Bloc ambassador back home and tell him how he's going to keep his promise to lower food prices in time for Thanksgiving? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I think today's debate requires a bit of seriousness from the Conservatives. We're talking about the challenges Quebecers and Canadians are facing. The cost of living has gone up recently, and today we have taken steps. We have legislation to help Canadians lower the cost of rent and, and uh, groceries, but the Conservatives are voting against everything we do, everything to fight climate change and so on. They should support C-56 so that we can stabilize grocery prices, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Longueuil Saint Hubert. Mr. Speaker, good news. Quebec will be matching the federal contribution of $900 million for housing. There's just one detail, one small detail. The money is still stuck in the federal coffers because the feds are trying to impose conditions on Quebec. This morning, Quebec's Premier said that the clock is ticking. The agreement must be reached before November 7th if it's to find its way into the economic update. Will the government put an end to this quibbling and immediately announce it will pay Quebec its share of the $900 million? The clock is ticking. The Honourable Minister. That's uh, great, Mr. Speaker. The fact is, we don't need threats or shouting or protests from the bloc. I'll use a word they don't like much. It begins with a C and ends with a, it's it's complaining. They're here to complain and to squabble and to pick fights. But the fact is that we have negotiated nine hundred million dollars for Quebec, and those negotiations will bear fruit because we will always stand up for Quebec. No, no, the honourable member for Longueuil Saint Hubert, Mr. Speaker. We're not the only ones. There are 10,000 students 
grumbling about the federal government right now in Quebec. Quebec's fin finance minister met with the deputy prime minister and listened to what he said. I repeated to her that it was urgent to sign the agreement, but the federal government is attaching strings, and that's unacceptable to us. Mr. Speaker, the announce that Quebec is doubling its contribution is supposed to be good news, but as long as the federal government is quibbling, that means it's not $900 million, but actually $1.8 billion lying dormant while we wait for Ottawa. When are they going to get down to work and announce that this money is coming? No, no, the Honourable Minister of Housing. Mr. Speaker, as the member knows full well, I've been in discussion with uh, my Quebec counterpart with a view to reaching a deal to flow federal funds for housing construction. We understand the priority uh, of Quebec City. Trusted with the responsibility of investing hundreds of millions of dollars, we do it uh, sincerely working alongside our provincial partners and ensure that Canadians receive the results of that funding. Good. The Honourable Member for Longueuil Saint Hubert. Mr. Speaker, do you know why Quebec's the only province matching Ottawa's $900 million investment in housing? Because Quebec is the only province in Canada that invests in housing. Quebecers have made the progressive choice to invest in housing themselves. And instead of being held up as an example, the federal government is holding back $900 million in a classic flag-waving dispute for which they alone have the solution. It's enough's enough. Frappereau is in Ottawa today. This would be a great opportunity to announce that the squabbling is over and a deal has been reached. When will the government stop jerking us around and give us the $900 million? <laughs> the Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The only thing we agree on between me and my colleague and Quebec is that there's urgency. And with Quebec City, we agreed in 2015 on a number of things. And we vote together for Quebec. What's bothering the, the bloc right now is that they're not at the bargaining table, and they never will be. On the other side, there are conservatives who want to take money away from the municipalities and don't trust the provinces. Mr. Speaker, we're going to work together with Quebec and come to a deal on housing. The Honourable Member from Central Okanagan, Similkameen, Nicola. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Prime Minister, it is clear that he is not worth the cost. He promised Canadians a affordable Thanksgiving, but all they are seeing are longer lines at the food bank. This NDP Liberal government is throwing off more crumbs than a stale loaf of bread. This half-baked loaf of higher deficits and carbon taxes is making it harder for Canadians to afford Thanksgiving. Will the Prime Minister deliver lower gas and lower grocery prices, or admit he made a turkey of a promise, one that's empty on the inside? Yeah. <laughs> Pass our line back eight years ago when 2.4 million more Canadians were in poverty. And we can ask what the government of Stephen Harper and, uh, and the office, uh, official opposition leader did at that point in time. They didn't do anything. And right now, as the global challenge, I, and yes, Canada has one of the lowest rates of food inflation in the world, but it's hitting us hard. And their solution stop taking action on climate change, which is the very thing that is driving that problem, Mr. Speaker. The reality is they would cancel the rebate peoples would get. And yes, they would attack, as an example, 3.5 million seniors who are going to get dental care. They want to take that away. That's what they're really about. London. Thank you very much. I'm hoping we can get the minister back to the conversation. Thanksgiving is normally a joyous celebration for families. However, this year, 7 million Canadians are struggling to put food on their table. After eight years of, the Canadian, uh, after eight years of this NDP Liberal government and across Canada, food bank visits are skyrocketing, with our highest level in Canadian history, according to the CEO of the Canadian food banks. This Prime Minister is worth not the cost. Will the Prime Minister lower prices or will he break his promise? to all Canadians. Right. Yeah. 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 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And our government is focused on lowering grocery prices, and we have legislation on the table that will do that. But what are the Conservatives focused on? Well, in Alberta, they're trying to pull out of the Canada Pension Plan, Mr. Whoa. Speaker. Canadians seen, who have contributed their whole lives to the CPP, seniors who have contributed their whole lives to their pensions are having the rug pulled out from under them. Mr. Speaker, will the Conservative leader stand up in this House and tell his colleagues to keep their hands off of Canadians' pensions? The Honourable Member for Levy Lobinière. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal government, after eight long years of disastrous management, the government introduces Carbon Tax 2.0 with the help of the Bloc, who want to radically increase the carbon tax by voting for it twice. Mr. Speaker, if you vote for the Bloc, you'll pay for it. You'll pay for it when you get your groceries, when you get gas, and so on. Why doesn't the Liberal government cancel its second Quebec carbon tax supported by the Bloc twice? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First of all, there is no federal carbon tax in Quebec because Quebec is a leader in combat combating climate change. Canadians are concerned about the cost of living and by climate change at the same time and by the impact of natural disasters on our health and our economy. That's why we created a system that puts a price on pollution to meet their concerns. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Rosemont La Petite Patrie. Mr. Speaker, we're facing an unprecedented housing crisis caused by the Liberals and Conservatives. In fact, we're seeing tents pop up more quickly than affordable housing. People are living in mold-filled apartments, but they can't move they have, because they have nowhere to go. People are suffering, but we know that there are solutions. Will the Liberals buy land and build housing on it that actually meets people's needs? Will they, will will they use public lands for public housing? Will they build social housing, housing co-ops, and community housing? Um, Speaker, I agree entirely with the need uh, my honourable colleague has flagged to build more affordable housing. I agree that we should be using federally owned land to achieve that outcome. I agree that we should continue to make the investments under the National Housing Strategy that is now responsible for the construction or repair of nearly half a million homes across this country. I'll be the first to acknowledge that over the course of the past number of decades, governments of both Liberal and Conservative persuasion did not do what was necessary to get the job done. We changed that in 2017. We will continue to make the investments necessary to to ensure that everyone in Canada has a place to call home. The Honourable Member from Hamilton Centre. Mr. Speaker, Canadians, particularly Jewish, Polish and Roma Canadians whose family members were murdered by Nazis demand answers. Meanwhile, the Liberals sit on a secret report from Nazi war criminals who were welcomed into Canada after World War II. Mr. Speaker, we can learn from the lessons of the past and heal if this Liberal government is intent on keeping those secrets uh, in safe. So, will the Liberal government release the Deschamps report so Canadians can finally know who these Nazi war criminals were that were welcomed into Canada? Merci, Monsieur le Président. What happened over the past 10 days in the House of Commons was completely unacceptable and embarrassing for all of us. The former Speaker of the House accepted full responsibility and resigned, which was the honourable thing to do. The Prime Minister apologised in this House. Our country has a dark history with respect to Nazis in this country, which is particularly hurtful to all Holocaust survivors, particularly the Jewish community in this country. Senior, senior officials and civil servants are looking carefully at the Deschamps Commission report and will be making recommendations soon on the options that are available. Merci. Honourable Member from Kitchener South, Hespler. Mr. Speaker, we know that Canadians are feeling the high cost of inflation. No family should have difficulty making ends meet and putting food on the table. 
Since 2015, our government has made significant investments to support Canadians and make life more affordable. Can the President of the Treasury Board share what our government is doing to ensure that Canadians are getting the support they need while supporting a strong economy? Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, félicitations. I'd like to thank my honourable colleague for her question today. Our government has always been there to support Canadians, whether it's through the CBA loan, Mr. Speaker, the grocery rebate, Mr. Speaker, the Canada Child Benefit and the Canada Dental Benefit. The fact of the matter is we'll continue to invest in Canadians while prudently managing the fiscal purse. And we will make sure that we are creating jobs and building a strong economy for this country, Mr. Speaker. That's our goal, and we'll continue to work hard for Canadians. Thank you. The Honourable Member from South Shore, St. Margaret's. After eight years of this NDP Liberal government, the price of everything is skyrocketing. Dalhousie University's food price report states that 64% of Canadians are altering their food buying habits, moving to dollar stores for groceries and buying less nutritious food. 20% or 3% are eating less. The report blames energy and input costs for this food crisis. The Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Will the Prime Minister lower food prices by Thanksgiving, or will he break his promise to Canadians? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. There are a number of measures that we have put on the table that will stabilize grocery prices, that will build more homes in this country, and consistently what we've seen from the Conservatives are delay tactics. Thankfully, this morning, we had a Conservative member stand up in this House and say that he was supportive of the government's legislation oh. and that he would be voting for it. And so I wonder, are there other Conservatives on their bench that are also of that view? And perhaps they could get together and speak to the Conservative leader, because I believe it's actually the Conservative leader that wants to delay help to Canadians. The Honourable Member from South Shore, St. Margaret's. So I didn't hear a yes or no to my question, so I'll try again. Food Bank Canada stated that at this time of year, the number of people turning to food banks is growing. And what happens is that people are forced to make impossible choices, choices like paying rent or buying food. NDP Liberal food inflation is driving food bank usage to its highest levels since Pierre Trudeau 42 years ago. Yeah. After eight years, the Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Will the Prime Minister lower food prices by Thanksgiving, or will he break his promise to Canadians again? The Honourable Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I find it curious that my Honourable Colleague is standing up only now to defend the interests of low-income families who might need the services that food banks provide when his party, over the course of my time in this chamber, has consistently voted against the measures that would make life more affordable here, for here. them. I look back to when we first formed government, when we raised taxes on the wealthiest 1 percent and cut them for the middle class, and they voted against it. When we changed the Canada Child Benefit and stopped sending checks to millionaires so we could put more money in the pockets of 9 out of 10 Canadian families, he voted against it. Every step of the way, including voting to support, uh, opposing support for food banks during the pandemic, they couldn't get behind it. Will he now vote for the measures that can have a direct impact on the price of groceries and support C-53? The Honourable Member from Coast of Bay, Central Notre Dame. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this NDP Liberal government, food bank usage in Newfoundland and Labrador is at a 42-year high. Well, make no wonder, according to the PBO, tax Carbon tax one and two is going to cost households in my province an extra $2,166 per year. After yesterday's vote, where 23 Atlantic Liberal MPs voted to support this suffering, folks back home say this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. So will this NDP Liberal government finally be the servant and not the master and axe the tax? <laughs> Lenahab, secrétaire parlementaire. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The agri-food sector has endured more extreme weather events, particularly in the province of that member. That's increasing severe and frequent storms, soil erosion, sporadic and unpredicted rainfall, higher than ever temperatures, including here in Ottawa in the last three days. Mr. Speaker, that all results from climate change. But as farmers always do, they've persevered and they've developed and implemented more environmentally friendly on-farm practices and they've reduced their emissions. Our government is supporting them every step of the way through that process and we'll make sure that we continue to be there for farmers and consumers when it comes to lowering food prices. Honourable Member from Costa Bay, Central Notre Dame. After eight years, Mr. Speaker, the member for Milton should be able to do a better job than that with answering a question. Newfoundlanders and Labradorians want answers. According to CTV's a news report, many will not be able to afford a turkey dinner this Thanksgiving. With vegetables and turkey up around 70 percent in just eight years, the NDP Liberal carbon tax is now taking food off tables. So will the costly coalition listen to the Liberal Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador and axe the tax? Here, 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 here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And what that member from Newfoundland won't say is that next week climate action incentive payments will be arriving in the banks, uh, the bank accounts of his constituents, and he should make sure that they know that's coming. Mr. Speaker, if that member really believes in affordability, then he ought to, he ought to vote for Bill C-56 and the Atlantic Accord, which he's standing against. But, Mr. Speaker, this is not your parents' Conservative Party. Mr. Speaker, the Progressive Conservatives stood up against things like acid rain and created solutions. But this Conservative leader, the member from Carleton, doesn't believe in climate change. He's spun on his heels. They've ditched Progressive values, and they don't care about fighting climate change or fighting for, for lower grocery prices. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Avignon, Lamitis, Matan, Matapedia. Mr. Speaker, September 2023 was the hottest month ever recorded. The water temperatures in the Gulf of St. Lawrence reached record levels. These are unprecedented ocean heat waves. In the Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean region, there are plantations that were planted to limit our carbon footprint, but they burned during the wildfires. And meanwhile, a report tells us that the federal government will increase oil production to record levels in the next two years. It will open the floodgates of its Trans Mountain Pipeline in January. It's very discouraging. How is it that the Minister of the Environment doesn't realize this? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I agree with my colleague that it's very important to reduce our impact on the environment. That is why our government has set a threshold for oil and gas sector emissions. And we have continued with our plan for emissions reduction. Oil and gas companies, Mr. Speaker, have proved on numerous occasions that they are capable of innovating and implementing new competitive technology. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Repentigny. Mr. Speaker, it's 30 degrees in October. Something is not right, Mr. Speaker. More and more experts believe that the 1.5 degree increase that we wanted to avoid even by the end of the century will actually be passed by 2030. But as the Minister of the Environment likes to point out, Canada is an oil producing country. And instead of reducing our production, we will be increasing it and breaking all of our previous records within two years. Canada is throwing fuel on the fire. The Minister of the Environment used to be a green activist. Is this really the legacy that he wants to leave? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, we take climate change and the fight against it very seriously. Our government has made the commitment to, be net, to reach net zero by 2050. And if the Bloc Québécois cares so much about this topic, I'd like to ask why the leader of the Bloc Québécois, when he was the Quebec Minister of the Environment, said without hesitation that the government of Quebec intended to go forward with developing the oil industry in Quebec. I'd like to get an answer to that question. The Honourable, Minister, the Honourable Member, rather, for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal government, we see that mismanaging public funds is really their brand. 
Journalist Daniel Leblanc from Radio Canada tells us that the Sustainable Development Technologies Canada Fund has spent nearly $40 million in a sloppy manner, and this shouldn't surprise anyone, because when the bosses are behaving like this, when the government mismanages everything, well, it makes sense that everyone underneath the bosses is going to do the same thing. When will this Liberal government finally show some common sense on how it manages public funds? The Honourable Minister. I'd like to thank the member for his question. And we need to remind Canadians of the facts, Canadians who are watching today. As soon as allegations were made, we asked for an arm's length expert report. And on the basis of that report, we took action. And we required that a plan be immediately implemented, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that we have the highest level of governments in that fund. We expect the highest level of governments from all institutions managing public funds. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker, it's very interesting to hear what the Minister said, but the problem is that it's always the same thing with this government. Every time they're caught with their hand in the cookie jar, then they suddenly do something, but actually the alarm bells had been, had been ringing for a long time, but the government didn't do anything. Now the government is saying we need accountability and serious management. Does this government believe in the current management of this fund who are responsible for the problems that we're talking about? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, there is no, there is no cookie jar in this situation. We're talking about serious allegations. It was the government that asked for the report. We were the ones who asked to ensure that we could actually have an inquiry into the allegations and then to create a system with the highest level of rigorous governments, governance, Mr. Speaker. That's what Canadians expect from us. And that is what this government expects from all institutions managing federal funds. We will ensure that taxpayers' money is properly managed. That I have deputy to Lethbridge. After eight years of this NDP Liberal government, they've made it absolutely clear that they intend to censor what Canadians can see, yep. hear and post online. Yep. They are hell-bent yep. to make sure that this is the case. My colleagues and I brought forward a very common-sense motion today in committee asking that the Minister come and answer questions with regards to her new podcast registry. This podcast registry, of course, is moving forward under the government's current censorship legislation. The response was this. The NDP, the Liberals and their Bloc allies all voted down our motion. They don't want to hear. They don't want to ask questions. They don't want to understand. They don't want to give Canadians a voice. In fact, one might refer to them as the censorship coalition. Why is this government so hell-bent on censoring Canadians? Then I have missed. Mr. Speaker, let's hear what experts have to say about uh, what the CRTC published. Mr. Professor Pierre Trudel calls the Conservative argument a complete disconnect with reality. He says it's clear it was not it intended to control what users see or post online. He calls the CRTC process a mere formality. He said, as a teacher, if a student wrote this in, a, in an exam, I'd put a big zero on his exam. You really don't have to be able to read to say something as pathetic as that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Saint Leonard Saint Michel. Mr. Speaker, after years of inaction from the Conservatives, this government finally adopted a system to protect passengers' rights with a set of obligations that all air transport companies must respect. In order, to, in order to strengthen that system, further measures were adopted in Bill C-47 to create stricter regulations. Stricter regulations on air transport companies to ensure that passengers will always be protected. Can the minister tell us about this? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank my friend and colleague for her question. Canadians work hard, they save and they put aside money for their holidays or to go visit loved ones. That's why our government was the first to protect passengers' rights. We strengthened our passengers' rights by making compensation mandatory for most situations, by ensuring that the responsibility falls on the companies, not passengers, and by creating standards 
that apply in case of disruption to travel. We were the first government to be there and stand up for Canadian passengers, and we will continue to do so. Now I have Deputy to Carlton Trail, Eagle Creek. After eight years of this Liberal NDP government, Liberal insiders have never had it so good, and Canadians are paying the price. We've learned that the RCMP is investigating allegations of misconduct involving three companies that worked on the Arrive Can app. They paint a picture of cozy relationships between this government and questionable contractors. Sweetheart deals for the Liberal insiders while Canadians struggle to make ends meet. The Prime Minister is not worth the cost. When will the Liberal government come, come clean on their unethical behaviour and quit lining the pockets of Liberal insiders? Mr. Speaker, this is also my first day rising in the chamber with you in the chair, and I want to congratulate you sincerely on your appointment. Mr. Speaker, misconduct of any kind in procurement processes is never acceptable. We're aware of the RCMP's ongoing investigation into these serious allegations. To protect the integrity of the investigation, we will not be providing any further comment at this time. Mission Fraser Canyon. Mr. Speaker, after eight years, this NDP Liberal government isn't worth the cost. Statistics Canada reports the number of businesses closing shop in Canada is greater than the number of businesses opening. In August, there was a 37% increase in business insolvencies year over year. This is the highest it's been in recent history. Canadians are losing confidence at an alarming rate in their ability to do business in our country. So my question is this. Why has the government turned a blind eye to the looming crisis of declining entrepreneurship in our country? Yeah, right. oh. Mr. Speaker, I want the small business owners of Mission Massacre Fraser Canyon to know that their Conservative Member of Parliament has voted against cutting taxes for growing small businesses, right. voted against lowering credit card transaction fees by up to a quarter, voted against supports for diverse and underrepresented entrepreneurs. Common sense does not mean voting against supports for small businesses, Mr. Speaker. L'honorable député de. Excusez-moi, l'honorable député de Mission Matsky Fraser Canyon. Mr. Speaker, that Liberal minister knows, as well as I do, that many of the problems, problems facing small businesses in our country are a direct result of that party's governance and their negligence. Higher inflation, higher payroll taxes, higher carbon taxes, higher commercial rents, a labour crisis, more red tape, and a botched SIBA repayment plan that confused thousands of entrepreneurs across our country. All of these factors hurt our job creators and business confidence in our country. When will this government begin taking these problems seriously? Well Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition called the supports we provided small businesses big, fat government supports. Yep. He's literally mocking the idea that we stood up for small businesses in the time of their need. In the middle of the pandemic, small businesses were worried about keeping their doors open, keeping the lights on, and keeping their teams employed. Thanks to our government, we stepped up in their darkest hour and delivered supports like the Canada Emergency Rent and Wage Subsidy, hardest hit business, tourism, hospitality recovery programs, and the SIBA loans. I am proud of the fact that we are there for them, Mr. Speaker. So while the Leader of the Opposition mocks the support we provided small businesses, we will continue to have their backs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, every week Canadians are having to spend more and more on groceries just to feed their families. They are having to put off savings and even, uh, even other essentials in order to keep putting food on the table. We recognize the global supply chain challenges and global inflation, but we need to acknowledge Canadian families are having a hard time right now. Could the Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry tell us about his meeting with the grocery executives and what we are doing to address affordability at the grocery stores? Then I have been asked. 
you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague and actually all, all our colleagues here on this side because, you know, my voice was to express the frustration of millions of Canadians when I met the CEO of the Grocery Store. But the good news, Mr. Speaker, is today we presented a five points action plan. First of all, we have commitment from the Grocery Store. We're going to create the Office of the Consumer Affair to help consumer, Mr. Speaker. We're going to make sure that the Grocery Code of Conduct is going forward. We're going to collect more data on the food prices in Canada. And, Mr. Speaker, we're going to fight for more competition. Every day is a good day to fight for Canadians. They should join us, Mr. Speaker, and make sure that we bring stabilization in price in Canada for the benefit of all. Let have Deputy de Edmonton Strathcona. Mr. Speaker, this summer, 11 emergency rooms in Alberta closed due to the shortage of health care workers. And today, we learned that some Canadians are being forced to leave overcrowded emergency rooms without treatment due to no staff. The Liberals and the Conservatives have failed to protect Canadians from Conservative leaders like Daniel Smith and Scott Moe, who want U.S.-style health care that will poach nurses and doctors from our public system. When will the federal government stand up for Canada's public health care and ensure our hospitals have the staff they need to care for Canadians? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And standing up for public health care is what we have done over the last eight years. It's certainly what we're going to do going forward. We made an investment of $200 billion in our health system, and we're making sure that not only does that money flow, but that there are indicators so that Canadians can see how health outcomes are improving for them in every corner of this country. We're going to make sure that this do these dollars go to make sure that we reduce wait times, increase doctors, increase nurses, and make sure overall Canadians get better health. Then I have deputy to Fort York. Mr. Speaker, on the 112th National Day of the Republic of China, Taiwan, I reflected on a few facts. Taiwan's never held two of our citizens as hostages for 1,019 days. It hasn't intimidated Chinese Canadians or interfered in our elections or tried to buy off MPs or political parties. Mr. Speaker, Taiwan is a democracy. They don't have a president for life who won't hesitate to destabilize world peace or threaten Canada's bilateral trade as a coward liberal government looks on. Can the government enlighten this House if there's been any new credible evidence for it to stand up for Canadians and combat foreign interference by the Chinese Communist Party, or is its new strategy to engage in a diversionary war with India? That I have missed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, I, I would like to, of course, reassure all members in this House of the importance for us to counter any form of foreign interference. That is why the Minister of Public Safety and myself have been working on this over the, the past months. And of course, we all know that uh, Justice Hug has been uh, appointed to be in charge of the uh, inquiry. Uh, that being said, I must also say that we'll continue to work with uh, uh, within our Indo-Pacific uh, Indo uh, strategy, and we have our China framework part of it. Thank you. Cela nous amène à la fin de la période des questions orales. Cependant, cependant, collègues, whoever colleague.